I would say multiple times a week, I get comments from people saying things like, you shouldn't ever spend that much money on a phone. And of course, they're talking about foldable phones. And there's lots of conversations around the internet you can find about whether or not they are worth it, whether or not they are worth that price. And there's sort of two sides to that coin, right? It's should they lower the price, but also should they increase the value? And that side of the coin is what we're going to be talking about today. And we're going to try to take sort of a different approach to it. We're going to look at those areas where the value of these devices needs to be improved. And we're also going to compare between the Z Fold, the Pixel Fold, and the OnePlus Open where each of these three are. This is going to be kind of a negative video because we're looking at the places where they fall short. I want to make it very, very clear. I love foldable phones. And even with everything I'm going to say, I will never go back to a slab style phone until there is something else out there, I guess. I'm never going to go back to just a traditional, just the cover display of this phone type device. This large canvas is just too useful to me. I adore it. I love it. And again, I'm never going back to a slab style phone. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be critical. That doesn't mean we shouldn't try and hold these OEMs accountable. And let's start with one of the things that some people love talking about, some people get sick of hearing about, and it is with the cameras. So let's look at this table I threw together showing the camera hardware on the Z Fold 5, the Pixel Fold, and the OnePlus Open. I'm not going to dig super deep into these, but the overall point I want to get across to you is that specifically with the Pixel Fold and the Z Fold 5, we do have camera hardware that is a step below where their flagship cameras are, the flagship devices, the Pixel whatever 8 Pro and the S20 now 4 Ultra from Samsung. They have objectively better camera hardware. And the result is that these foldable devices, which cost more than those devices, have worse camera performance. The Pixel Fold in particular, I think, is a really good example because when you look at their primary sensor, yes, it's 48 megapixels, but when you go to take photos with it because of the pixel size and the sensor size, anything in low light and you do run into a little bit of trouble. I will often manually turn the night sight mode or the night mode on with my Pixel Fold to get rid of the grain that might be there otherwise. And if you're shooting video in low light, you're definitely going to see a little bit more grain than you'd like to see. And with that 5X optical zoom, comparing it to the Pixel 7 Pro or the Pixel 8 Pro, it is definitely a little bit of a step down. Of course, with the Z Fold, you're talking about 3X zoom and the Ultra phones have five or 10X zoom, much larger sensor, much better quality. The main camera, 50 megapixels, takes good pictures, just like the Pixel Fold more often than not, it's fine, but compare it to the main phone, and it is significantly worse. The exception to this is actually the OnePlus Open, which is ironically the cheapest of these three devices. The camera hardware there, it's not identical to what they have in their primary, their, their best phones, but it is remarkably similar. And even though the software, the processing on the OnePlus Open, I don't think is quite as good as what Samsung and Google has with their devices, the hardware is so good that to me overall, this is the best camera. It takes the best photos and it takes the best videos because they didn't skimp out on the camera hardware. That is a big deal. For me though, this is the most obvious place where there absolutely has to be improvement. Why is it that people who pay the extra money to get these foldable devices don't get the best camera performance? And I get there are limitations. Okay, these are very thin devices. They are more expensive to make, so their margins would be cut into by doing this. I totally understand all that. But like a lot of things I'm going to talk about in this video, that is a reason it is not an excuse. And I, I personally don't really care about that reason. They need to figure it out, and they need to supply us just like OnePlus has managed to do with the best camera hardware that they can. Now, software support is another big thing for these devices, and it is very much a mixed bag. In this instance, OnePlus is far and away in the weakest position. In fact, my device has not gotten any update of any sort 
since the end of January. I'm filming this on March the 5th. Hopefully, I'll have this video out on March the 5th as well. That is far too long. We are still waiting on Android 14, and that is probably what is taking so long to get any update out there, finishing up Android 14. But I have to tell you, the Z Fold 5 has had Android 14 for a long time. The Pixel Fold has had Android 14 for a long time. So the OnePlus Open, no updates since January, still waiting on Android 14. That is absolutely not good enough. Now, I know 14 has rolled out in some regions, India, I think some people in Malaysia are beginning to see it, but you know what I'm saying? And it's not because the software is bad on the OnePlus Open, right? It's because it's an expensive device. You can get it for around $1,400, but my goodness, that's still a lot of money. And while I don't think I have like massive problems with their software, if we're talking about whether or not these devices are worth it, that's a place OnePlus needs to improve. When we look at something like the Z Fold 5, things are quite a bit better, right? So they've delivered updates pretty much every single month, maybe every single month, actually. They've hit One UI 6.0, which was, as I said, Android 14 a couple of months back, but they go a step further. And this is where they separate themselves from Google with the Pixel Fold specifically. They have outright told us, hey, one UI 6.1 is coming at the end of March, and with that is going to be all these AI features from the S24 line of phones, right? So they've put out a new flagship with all these new features, AI features here and there, whatever, and they've told us, I know you want them on your Z Fold 5, and we're going to give them to you for the most part, not all of them, but for the most part, and we're going to do it at the end of March. With Google... Much of the same is true. They've delivered updates every single month. There's been three rounds of betas. There's been Android 14. They just released a feature drop literally yesterday. The updates have been there. We've gotten new features, the ability to span or stretch applications, dual screen in your camera, an entirely new camera interface, dual interpreter mode, tons and tons of new features, huge battery life improvements, uh, performance improvements. However, because of their lack of communication, the vibe in the Pixel Fold community right now is extremely negative because Circle to Search was just delivered to the Pixel 7 and the Pixel Fold was ignored. It runs the same hardware. People feel left out. All Google would have had to have done is said, hey, we're still working on Circle to Search on the Pixel Fold because of the layout of the screen. Something's different and it's kind of delaying things. Give us another X amount of time. You're going to have it in this ballpark area. And there would be so much less negativity. They, just like Samsung, have done quite well with software, but they don't communicate well enough. They don't tell you what's going on. And because of that, users are left wondering... Am I going to get these features from the Pixel 8? They've got all these cool AI features, and Samsung told their people they're going to get their AI features, but I spent $1,800, and I don't know if those things are coming to my device or not. I have no idea what's going on, and that leaves people feeling extremely left out and ignored, even though, by all other evidence, they've not been ignored. The Pixel Fold has not been abandoned, but in people's minds they feel like they have been. I'm getting comments from people saying they're not giving a circle to search with the Pixel 7, so I'm switching to the Z Fold devices. I'm going to sell my Pixel Fold and switch. The Z Fold also doesn't have circle to search, but what they do have is much clearer messaging. People are willing to wait on things if they at least know how long they're going to have to wait, and Google absolutely has to improve on this. Another big place where all three of these companies need to improve is with their customer service. I'm not going to dive into like specific details or specific stories. You can find them. Google is your friend here. You'll find tons of stories about what I'm about to talk about. All three of them fall short. You can find very negative stories across the board. You've got stories of devices being, you know, that needed to be warranted, being delivered to warehouses only to be lost doing air quotes here because they weren't lost, they were probably stolen. You've got instances of devices arriving for warranty and then companies ghosting people. They don't hear anything for a month before their devices, hopefully, 
eventually fixed. You have instances of companies just not wanting to actually repair devices without charging money for it. When you spend this much money on a device that is a foldable, which means it does have a slightly higher likelihood of failing, most of us expect that sort of white glove service that we're like, hey, we're like your top of the line premium customers. We expect to be treated like that. And for far too many of us, not me specifically, I've never had this happen. They've always been fine with me. I've not actually had to ever warranty a foldable. But I see the comments. I see the Reddit threads. I see people on the internet sharing these stories. You don't get that white glove service. Some people are fine, but far too many end up extremely frustrated with how other companies, whether it's Samsung, Google, or OnePlus, OnePlus might be the worst of the group, but trust me, you could find stories about all three. They end up feeling like they're kind of getting the run around and it's not a good feeling when you've spent that much money to feel that way. When you add all this up, I think all three devices are in a pretty similar place, right? So like OnePlus probably has the lead in terms of premium hardware, like overall their hardware is just really, really nice but they're behind in software. Samsung might be ahead in the software messaging, but I think overall, Google might still have a slight lead in overall software, would I say performance or more just support, I guess would be the better word. Now that might change with the end of March and One UI 6.1, Samsung may step out front with that. But again, they're all sort of jockeying for that leading position when we're talking about the places where they all struggle the most and to sort of put a bow on this with all of this being accounted for like i said earlier i am still a massive believer in these devices the the utility that they bring to me personally is just irreplaceable now some of you have potentially tried one of these devices it kind of reminds me back in the day when the lg v60 with the dual screen case was a thing i was a big surface duo user we bought the thin q <laughs> with the dual screen case from my wife she used it for a few days and just was like I don't use this other screen. It's just there. So it wasn't useful for her. So we returned it and got her a different phone. Some people have gotten these foldables. They've used the tablet screen and they've said, this is just not for me. I don't understand why I would need this. And I'm going to get my $1,800 back. And that's absolutely fair. But for people like me, it clicks, it works. And even with these shortcomings, they are absolutely worth it. Let me know what you think about all this though, guys. Where do you think these devices are falling short? There are definitely other areas where improvement could be uh, made where they might fall short of the other flagship devices from the very same OEM. Let me know what those examples are in the comments down below, guys. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.